Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm John Bachman. Joining me right now is Paul Peterson. He's a professor of government at Harvard University, along with Eric Hanischek and Ludger Valsman. He wrote a horrifying new book called Endangering Prosperity, a global view of the American school, which, among other things, shows that American school kids have fallen way behind other kids from around the world, especially in math. Professor Peterson, great to talk with you, sir. Well, you know, it's a terrible thing that we're ranking only 32nd in the world. 32% of our students are proficient. We're number 32 as uh, compared to other countries that have been surveyed. And it's hard to believe that's where we're at at this point, given, uh, you know, all the resources that American school children have. We've been hearing about this decline for a long time, but let's specifically focus on this subject of math. You mentioned the U.S. ranks 32nd in the world. Why is this subject area so important when it comes to kids learning these lessons and the modern economy? Well, we know that math skills are in scarce supply in our society. If you have math skills, you're going to get a better job out there. Uh, of course, if you graduate from college, you will be earning about 60 percent more than if you just graduate from high school. And when you look at test score performance, you see that about half of this difference is explained by the fact that the ones who proceed to college are going to have higher math skills. That translates into a higher quality workforce and the economy as a whole prospers. And so why, you know, is it because of, of technologies and computers that math skills are so in, in demand right now? I think it's uh, uh, partly because it's in scarce supply that they're so valuable, but it's also because that's where the cutting edge is in society. You, you just really can't do a lot of things unless you've got some basic skills in math. Uh, it's also the case that uh, if you could bring the math skills in the United States up to the level of other countries, you could grow the whole American economy by an enormous amount. We figure it's about a 20 percent increase in wages if we could get up to the Canadian level. In, you know, Canada clearly doing better than the United States uh, on the subject of math. When we look at the costs here, the long-term costs, especially in terms of GDP, how much is at stake here in, in terms of dollar amount? Well, if you look over the whole course of the 21st century, what's left of it, and there's a lot of it left, uh, it adds up to about $77 trillion, which is an astronomical sum of money. It's hard to put put this in perspective, but you translate that down into wages, it's it's 20 percent a year. Now, you don't see it in the first year. It shows up only gradually as more educated people enter into the workforce, but the long-term impact is enormous. And that's a huge number to, to wrap your head around. You know, that's a lot of money, and of course that would make a huge difference in the economy uh, years down the road. Uh, when we talk about the American school system, we should clarify also that some states are doing better than others. You talk about Maryland and Massachusetts and Florida as examples of bright spots, but Florida in particular is interesting because there has been marked improvement here, but unlike Maryland and Massachusetts, Florida seems to be getting a little bit uh, better return on its investment from you know a financial standpoint. What is Florida doing that's working so well? Well, you know, nationwide we spend $12,000 per pupil uh, which is a very large sum of money, as much as any other country in the world except perhaps Switzerland, uh, which spends just a tiny bit more than we do. If you uh, look at how much is spent, it varies a lot from one state to another. And some states have poured a lot of money into the school system in the last uh, 20 years, uh, and some have put much less into it. And Florida is the state that has gotten lots of improvement with very little in additional dollar and cents going into it. So what are they doing? Well, what are they doing is they're, they have a clear accountability system. They tell parents, teachers, principals, just exactly how each school is doing. They have a reading program that's very rigorous. They have a math program. They're, they're holding students accountable. Uh, they're giving students choices. They're giving families choices. Uh, so it's a it's a well-rounded innovation program that they have been carrying out uh, on a steady basis for about a decade. Yeah, and a lot of those uh, changes were made by uh, former Florida Governor Jed Bush, and those are starting to pay some dividends. And interesting, you mentioned that school choice. That's another trend we're seeing in the school system, so that might provide um, some benefit as well. Now, you know, out of all that stuff, what do you think is the most important lesson uh, for states that aren't doing so well 
Uh, what's, what should they take away from what Florida's doing? What's the most important lesson you think? Well, you know, I would also include Massachusetts in the story because Massachusetts has always had good schools, but they've improved a lot in recent years. And one of the things that they have done is they put into place a uh, high school graduation exam. And that seems to have had a, a big positive impact in, in this state. And that's what countries around the world do that we don't do. They expect kids to learn something in high school and they say, you need to pass this examination when you leave uh, your high school and we're gonna, that's gonna determine the rest of your career. So in other words, high school students are given very clear indication of what it is they're supposed to know and what they're supposed to learn. And that just can change the nature of the high school experience. And that gets back to your point about clear expectations and accountability. Now, another thing you talk about is this need for massive change, you know, a huge shift in the way that schooling is done here in the United States. And we've heard from both President Obama more recently with his Race to the Top program and George W. Bush with his No Child Left Behind program. They've promoted these big educational initiatives, but we have not heard about, you know, these changes actually taking place in these big grand scale type of way. We, we see uh, that these initiatives seem to get bogged down by political priorities, teachers unions and some parents groups getting involved. So what do you think is it actually going to take uh, to get these adults to get on the same page on this debate and focus actually on the big picture and the economic input, uh, impact that you talked about at the beginning of the interview? Well, you know, I suppose the states are going to have to take the leadership. I don't think we can expect something to happen just at the local district level. There's 14,000 school districts in the country, and those school districts seem to be bogged down. They have locally elected school boards that seem to be more influenced by the employees at the local school than by the public as a whole, just because very few people turn out in those local elections. So if we're gonna have leadership, it's gonna to have to come at the state level. The federal government is probably too far away. Uh, we have had a lot of presidents very committed to trying to bring about change, and our current president's as committed as any of them. But it's really hard to do something in Washington and make the local districts pay any attention. So I think it takes leaders like Jeb Bush was in Florida at the state level uh, to carry out the effective kinds of reforms that really we need to have. Yeah, and that's, you know, another good example of how states can kind of compete against each other to figure out what works here and maybe implement some of those working programs in states that aren't having as much success. I do want to try to wrap up this interview on a positive note, though, and you see a huge shift coming uh, with the advantages of digital education. What's the potential for the future of online learning here? And will this be the thing that helps save America's education system? I think a secret to this is to make sure that we have online education that's available on a course by course basis so that students can pick the teacher that they would like the best. And if you have good teachers online, then they don't have to take a course from a weak teacher in their local high school, but they can take other courses from their local teacher in their high school if that's where the best course is. So we wanna have a lot of variety out there because different courses for different kids and all kinds of uh, opportunities for students to get the best. At the same time, we wanna hold those students up to very high expectations and to make sure that they're learning the material so that we have a, a good incentive for them to perform at the highest level. And that's another important point you make, and it seems you, you make it over and over again that we have to hold the students accountable in all this uh, as well. They're, they're an important part. It's not, they're not just passengers on this uh, train, so to speak. Uh, Paul yeah, Peterson, Harvard professor and author of the critically important new book, Endangering Prosperity. It's available now on Amazon and in bookstores. Thank you very much for being with us, sir. Thanks much. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.